Nino Brown Boxing and I'm back in the building. Shout out to the LDBC. Don't forget to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. So I was just thinking about some quick, you know, I had some quick thoughts on Americon and the WBC. I guess you can consider this a part two to the video that I just dropped about the WBC. Um, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, uh, and Manny Pacquiao. You can go check that video out. But I was sitting here thinking and, you know, right after, um, the WBC president, Mauricio Suleiman, he, uh, like about, about six months or so back, he said that Americon was still, like, well, right before, okay, let me backtrack for a second. When Danny, before Danny Garcia fought Keith Thurman, Americon was Danny's mandatory. You know, the WBC said he would maintain his mandatory mandatory position no matter what happened in the Canelo fight but due to injuries and inactivity Amir Khan was dropped from the top 15 by the WBC now it wasn't due to him losing to someone at welterweight it was just due to simply him being inactive so that got me thinking what happens if Amir Khan becomes active what happens if Amir Khan faces someone in the WBC rankings and he was to defeat them would the WCBC put Americon back in the top 10? Or they put him in back in the top five? And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking like that's very possible. Now we all know how Khan is. He's very delusional these days. He's not trying to really get in the ring, fight any top competition. But if you're talking about him fight, facing someone in the top 15 for the WBC at welterweight, I believe Khan can definitely beat some of those guys. Um, so I'm just thinking to myself like what happens and how, how does Khan being possibly put back in the top 10 by the WBC, you know, with him having a name and all, something is definitely, is likely to happen. How does that affect a guy like Sean Porter? How does that affect a guy like Danny Garcia? Now, we all know the backstory that, that Maricon, you know, he moved up, he became the number one contender, whatever, he didn't want to take the fight, he was chasing the money, he was calling out Mayweather, he was calling out Pacquiao, and then he dared to be great, went up to 155 and got knocked out by Canelo, but he hasn't fought since then, and the WBC were still going to let him maintain his number one mandatory spot, so just, just based off of that, you know, if you're not going to include the inactivity, Maricon, by the WBC standards, Amir Khan should be, you know, would be worthy of a ranking in WBC's top 10 if Amir Khan just remained active. Now, I just find it funny because Amir Khan could definitely shake things up for a lot of guys that are after, um, that are interested in getting a fight with Keith Thurman right now. Now, do I believe that, do I believe that um, Amir Khan wants to get in the ring with Thurman? Absolutely not. Do I believe Thurman would take the, the fight take the fight with Amir Khan over a fight with Sean Porter? Absolutely. Over a fight with Errol Spence? Absolutely. But when it comes to that, what happens if the WBC was to put Amir Khan back in the top 10 or back in the top 5? You know, like I said in a previous video, the WBC can order and make anyone in the top 10 Keith Thurman's WBC mandatory. It doesn't have to be the number one ranked guy in Sean Porter. It doesn't have to be number two in Danny Garcia. Now, we've already seen the Danny Garcia fight. We've already seen the Sean Porter fight. Well, we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen Keith Thurman against a style like American. Now, granted, you know, uh, Khan has a glass chin and he's known for being knocked the hell out. But at the same time, Keith Thurman hasn't had any knockouts recently. So he didn't knock it. He wasn't able to knock out Robert Guerrero. Yeah, he beat the brakes off of the guy, but he couldn't stop him. Now, you know, we have to stick and people say, oh, yeah, but Robert Guerrero is a tough guy. I was like, no, you got to take into consideration that Robert Guerrero, you know, he was a much smaller fighter moving up multiple weight classes and he went all 12 rounds with Keith Thurman. So I'm just thinking to myself, we all know that American will be back in the ring soon. He's going to need the money. We all know that 
Americana is about the money and that good payday or a payday in general is definitely going to be in the future of Amer- for Americana. And it just makes me wonder, what route does Americana take? Like, does he even... Since he's so thirsty for the money, does Americana take the route to put him in a position using his name to p- potentially get a mandatory spot or a mandatory shot for Keith Thurman's WBC title? Even though if he doesn't want want it, Americana seems like he's the type of guy that would just put himself in that position simply to get step aside money. Now, you know, Keith Thurman and the team probably won't pay Americana step aside money unless another fight would be extremely lucrative. And I believe that... Uh, I believe the team Thurman would pay Americana step aside money to fight Manny Pacquiao. Now, I don't think uh, Team Thurman would pay Americana step aside money to fight Sean Porter, but at the same time, it puts Sean Porter, Team Porter, in a position. They it puts them in an awkward position because they put all of their eggs in one basket when it came when it came to um, fighting Keith Thurman, and it's just something to think about. What if? American gets elevated back into the top five ranking. I mean, it's definitely possible. The guy hasn't taken a loss at 147 yet. So let's see what happens. It was just a quick, you know, quick video. Just thought in my mind how things with the WBC can definitely get a little bit shaken up. But that's the video, guys. It's Nino Brown Boxing. Shout out to the LDBC. Don't forget to hit that like button and please subscribe. Peace.